Hello beautiful creatures, how are you all doing today? I have been so busy working on my first doll for my astrology series here on the channel that I totally forgot that I had this video to share with you guys. So today I'm going to be showing you a little bit of a bits and bobs video in which I took a bunch of random supplies that I had that were kind of generating some ideas in my mind and just sort of went with the creative flow. This can be one of my favorite ways to craft, just taking the supplies you have on hand and seeing what you make along the way rather than starting with a big idea. So I'm taking this hank of hair that's a little too small to do a full reroute, this pripped body and this flocking powder that I recently got and seeing what I can come up with. Now, I was a teenager during the golden era of Tumblr, circa 2011 through 2014, and these colors and textures really uh, made me think about the pastel goth scene that was alive and well in like 2012. So that's what I'm leaning into. And of course, I'll make it known that I am not pastel goth. It is not an aesthetic that I uh, dress or know much about. I'm just basing this off my little teenage dream of being pastel goth and seeing these cool colors and these soft pastels and seeing what I can come up with inspired by that aesthetic. So with that in mind, I've gone ahead and completed a reroute that will allow me to have a micro fringe and either space buns or ponytails or pigtails with an undercut that will be flocked. So that's what's been happening on screen while I've been talking about my 2012 Tumblr dreams. Now, what alternative subculture aesthetic would be complete without some piercings? So I'm taking any excuse to pierce dolls because I think this is such a fun body mod and it's super easy. This time I'm pre-piercing my doll with an embroidery needle. This is not something I usually do. Normally I just cut the jewelry piece on an edge and shove it in. But a lot of people in my piercing videos seem to be like, oh my god, you gotta do a pre-hole with an embroidery needle. So that's what I did this time and I'm just showing you how I am threading through the jewelry which is just made up of jewelry pins and dressmaking pins and I'm going to pierce both ears and her nose. This time I did pierce the doll prior to doing the face up. It's entirely personal preference. If you are going to be piercing your doll after doing the face up, just be really careful not to crack the sealant when you're pushing in piercings. But yeah, entirely up to you. With her piercings complete and her half reroute done, I'm going to go ahead and seal off her hair to protect it while I begin the face up. I'm going to begin by buffing in some pastels to create some shadows and some contouring. I find that when I do a goth aesthetic doll, whatever that kind of doll might be, I use a lot more pastels than when I do other aesthetics just because I find it easiest to create those makeup looks with pastel as it's easy to blend out and kind of works more like makeup than say colored pencil. So I'm just buffing in a lot of pastels in all the places that I would do makeup if it was a real face. And then I'm going to just pencil in layer by layer more and more detail until the face comes to life. And here is her face up almost complete. I did make the decision to add a little band-aid. This is something new for me and I know it's more of a modern aesthetic than a classic 2012 pastel goth aesthetic, but I think it looks really cute and it adds a color shift from just an all black makeup look. Mm -hmm. 
And with her face done, I can add her back onto her body and begin to style her hair and move on to flocking that undercut. I've gone ahead and parted along the fringe and ponytail sections so that I can flatten out her fringe and create that classic micro fringe pastel goth look. This definitely starts off as a bit of a hack job, but the whole idea of the kind of do-it-yourself hairstyle was really what I was aiming for. Like I wanted it to look like she had cut and dyed and styled her hair herself. And it turns out super cute with those long edges and I love the ponytails. So now it's time to move on to the flocking. As a teenager, I had an undercut. I don't know if that's what they're actually called, but that's what they were called in my day. And so this is really funny to bring to life on a doll. If you are in New Zealand, I picked up this flocking powder from Linecraft online. They don't have a store in Auckland, but they do have some locations around New Zealand. For opacity, I would definitely recommend painting the color under the flocking, the same color as the flocking, as I did have to do quite a few layers to get some opacity. And now for clothing, I've kind of been winging it up until this point, so I hadn't really thought about a outfit, but I knew I wanted to do a soft pink, so I'm taking this soft pink fabric that I have that I've obviously doodled on, and I'm doing a what I refer to as an accordion fold, but I actually don't know if that's the true name for this fold, to create a pleated skirt. The pleated skirt seems to be a staple of pretty much all modern goth aesthetics, so I knew I wanted to do one. So I've just gone and sewed those little folds in place. I wanna make sure this pastel goth take is a little more modern, so I'm gonna do a half skirt rather than a full pleated skirt. I'm gonna go ahead and secure a belt to this little half skirt with some glue and I'm just using a pastel ribbon. There also seems to be a common theme of hardware involved in the accessories of pastel goth aesthetics. So I'm gonna be creating um, a few harness kind of moments using, again, jewelry supplies such as jump rings. And I'm gonna be using some classic chains because what pastel goth doesn't have a chain involved in their outfit and kind of yeah making some hardware adjustments to this really soft skirt So obviously I need something to go under the half skirt, so I'm just gonna make a little pair of stretchy black shorts just out of a stretch cotton. To add a textural element to the cotton, I'm using ribbon to create kind of like a little strap, and then I've just sewed them up the sides, and here are my little shorts. They are super cute and just super understated so that the main effect will be created by the skirt. But I need to create some little loops for my skirt's belt to go through. So I'm just using ribbon and gluing it down facing the wrong way and then folding it back over itself to create a belt loop. Putting the two bottoms together, you can see it creates a super cute black and pastel look that I think is really fitting for the pastel goth aesthetic. And then something that seems to be quite classic with the pastel goth look is like a pleated skirt and then just an oversized t-shirt, maybe with some sort of band logo or catchphrase or something on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a nice baggy white t-shirt. And I'm going to use this really little ribbon that I got recently to create a harness. This is again kind of more of a modern pastel goth look. But I thought it would be fun to make a little harness rather than a decal or draw onto the t-shirt. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So 
most of the supplies required to make my little harness are simply just jump rings and ribbon. You can get these at your local craft store. I got both of mine from Spotlight. And yeah, I'm just using glue and the mannequin of the doll to create my measurements and just building from there. So here are all our outfit pieces so far. I did add a chain and collar to my harness and we can see them on her hair. I think this is super cool. It has that understated yet over accessorized elements that Pastel God seems to have. But I want to go ahead and also make a big cozy sweater or sweatshirt because this seems to be a lot of oversized outerwear involved in Pastel God aesthetic. So I'm going to go make a fluffy little jacket for her. I love the addition of the fluffy jacket. I think the added pink really ties together the pastel theme rather than that black and white contrast that was overpowering prior to the jacket. But I do think she needs something fishnet. So I want to go ahead and make her some stockings out of a little mesh top that I no longer need. Adding the fishnet is going to create another textural element along with that fluffy jacket. And I'm just going to take these Draculaura heels and paint them in the likes of the pastel goth color scheme I'm going for to create a sort of demonia or why are you shoe that was very popular with the pastel goths of Tumblr 2012. With her shoes complete with a complete new makeover, I'm going to go ahead and add some gloss to her lips and eyes to bring some realism to her face up. And here she is in all her pastel goth glory, the completed doll. I'm so happy with how this turned out, just taking a bunch of art supplies that I had and seeing what I could come up with. I am so happy that I came up with the pastel goth inspo because it's such a fun aesthetic and although I could never pull it off I really think this doll is. I think she looks so gorgeous. I love her micro fringe, her half updo, half flocked hair. I definitely want to try that again that's for sure. And yeah I love her little choker that is also part of her harness. Just so many fun cute fashion choices that I wouldn't be brave enough to make so I'm so glad that this doll could make them. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are super excited about the astrology series that I am about to start on the channel. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button if you had fun because we would love to see you more. And if you are a returning subscriber, I love you so much. I hope you are having a great day. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment down below, hit that like button and I'll see you guys so, so soon with more crafts and more curios.